Hey folks, I recently came across some research that suggested that going on regular nature walks could have a positive impact on your health, including potentially increasing your mood. Now, I have to do a university assignment where I do a public facing project. And so I figured, why not do an experiment? I'm going to do 10 days of daily nature walks while I track my mood with a mood tracker. It's also a good opportunity to wear out a new pair of shoes that I bought recently. Let's go. Day one. Well, that's nice. Okay, hold on. How is this experiment going to work? Well, you see, I'm going to take a measurement three times a day of my mood. First, I'm going to measure my mood at the beginning of the day. Second, after my walk. And third, at the end of the day. By doing so, I will be able to create a graph of the change in mood over the course of the 10 day runtime of the experiment. This experiment has three potential outcomes. One, my mood increases over the course of the 10 day runtime. This is good for nature walks, means it improves your mood. The second potential outcome is if it doesn't do anything, if there is no change in my mood at all. That I think might be the most likely, but I'm looking forward to see how it goes. The third outcome is if it decreases my mood if my mood gets worse over the course of the experiment. And obviously that would be a pretty bad sign for nature walks as a mood increaser. There are other potential benefits of nature walks. I'll get into that in a bit though. Right, time to go home. It is very busy out here. Got a bit quieter as the day's gone on, but the weather is still absolutely gorgeous.
well, just got back from the walk. Uh, it was fun. Not sure it changed my mood very much. It is helping me wear out those shoes, though. <laughs> Hoping that things change over the next few days, because while it would be an interesting result, it would also be more interesting if something actually changed. I don't really think I've learned anything yet. Well, on to day two. Day two was rather similar to day one. I went to the park, filmed, experienced nature and went home. Each of these walks could range from 40 minutes to over an hour depending on how slow I walked, how long I stayed, and whether the park was my only destination or if I chose to run errands that day while I was out. Day 3 was much of the same. I made note of an underpass that I walked through on my way from one part of the park to the other, I walked through this route throughout the entire experiment, and I always felt as if it was some kind of portal. I would enter one side from the bustling first half of the park on my walk, open green spaces, perfect for picnics. I would travel through the dark, echoing tunnel, and I would emerge into a quieter, closer, wilder space that I much prefer. At this point I feel like things are changing. Paying more attention to the nature around me. Honestly, it's very pleasant being out here. It looks beautiful. But do I feel... But do I feel better than I did five days ago? I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to look at the data. I'm continually drawn to this bench. I don't know why. Perhaps it is because of how overgrown the bench is. There's just something quaint about that. Now it's time for me to sit out here and Enjoy the weather, look at the birds, but in case I get bored, I did bring a book. So, pretty sweet. I'm being attacked from behind by plants. After enjoying a nice read about the use of silence in poetry, I'm feeling ready to head back home. Do I feel better after five days? Maybe I do. Much of the literature corroborates the idea that nature walks improve psychological health and cognition. For example, the cognitive benefits of interacting with nature finds that interacting with natural environments has a greater restorative effect on cognitive functioning than urban environments. They describe it as follows. Imagine a therapy that has had no known side effects, was readily available and could improve your cognitive functioning at zero cost. Similarly, Walking Green, developing an evidence base for nature prescriptions, finds that 50 minute walks through a forest improved psychological state when compared to activities of daily living. However, some of the research is more mixed in its results. When urban environment is restorative, the effects of walking in suburbs and forests on psychological and physiological relaxation of young Polish adults, which is quite a title, 
finds a reduction in depression in young Polish adults in both natural walk environments and in urban walking environments, which suggests that proximity to nature might not be as important as other studies have found. Physiological and psychological effects of walking on young males in urban parks in winter, which is also quite a title, set out to fill a gap in the literature as most research focuses on green natural spaces rather than winter natural spaces, and they did not observe a reduction of depression in natural environments, though they did still observe relaxing and psychologically beneficial effects despite the season. Overall, the literature seems to agree with my initial hypothesis that nature walks might be beneficial. I, of course, was still waiting on the results. Day 8. Almost done. Days 8 and 9 passed without much fanfare, and before I knew it, it was the final day. Day 10. Final day. You know, I thought it was going to rain today because it was really cloudy, but it's sunny anyway. I'm sure that's a good thing. Honestly, we could have done with some rain. It's been 10 solar days of sun. Ah, day 10, final day of the challenge. Do I think it worked? Maybe. This challenge has been blessed by pleasant weather and I'm lucky even to have a space like this that is so wild and natural nearby so I can easily see why someone who is not so fortunate might not get the same results so here are the problems with the experiment for one it's not exactly a perfect solution perhaps nature walks do markedly improve a person all the time perhaps people who go on these walks all the time are happier However, it's not a solution everyone can implement. Going on daily nature walks is a big time commitment. Most people don't have that kind of time. And that does beg the question, if not all people have the time to go on regular nature walks, then perhaps people who do are happier for other reasons. Could they simply be caused by the same difference between those groups? Could those people be happier for the same reasons they have that time, rather than the walk itself? The studies I cited managed to avoid this bias, but because of the nature of my experiment, I can't. Which brings us to the other problem here. The experiment itself. With a sample size of one and only qualitative data, the methodology isn't exactly rigorous. I'm a university student. I'm near the end of the year and I'm looking towards summer holidays. That might make me happier than usual and skew the result. I'm the only test subject here. I can correct for what I can correct for. I cannot correct for myself. Certainly going on walks through nature isn't going to improve the rest of your life. It's not going to make your bills magically go away. Even that's presuming you already have a natural space nearby that you can reliably and safely reach. And since according to Statistica, 84% of the British population live in urban areas, this can be difficult. However, Despite these problems, it's still worth performing the experiment. There's plenty of research showing that nature walks can help treat depression and anxiety, and it's worth trying. However, it will not solve your problems alone. Nature walks might help you, but if you want the biggest benefit, you can't stop there.
will I keep up the project? Will I keep going on walks weekly? Yeah. Maybe not daily, because that's a lot of time. There's a lot of things that I could have done with that time this week. But I think it's a good idea, if you can. As for me, usually I would spend this time reading a book. However, I have finished the book. <laughs> Tell if you can see that. I don't know if it's mirrored in the camera for you or not, but it's mirrored in the camera for me. But I finished reading my book, and so I'm going to give it back to the library so that other people can read it. Off to the library. And with the book dropped off at the library, it was time to head home. So, what now? Here are the results of the experiment in graph form. If you look, you'll see three lines. One for my morning readings, one for the after walk readings, and one for the evening readings. What you'll see is that the morning readings tend to be higher than the evening readings. This makes sense to me. Since I'm so exhausted in the evenings, I'm generally a little more miserable and less tolerant of annoyances. However, the after-walk readings are always above both. This also makes some sense. The walks are really pleasant, and after going on a walk, I always feel quite happy. This proves that walks have an immediate effect on mood, which wanes over time. However, the graph also shows that for all three lines, there is an increase in mood over the 10 days. This seems to prove that the walks manage to improve my mood over time, rather than just immediately. However, the trend is slight in all three cases, with the afterwork readings changing most significantly. Unfortunately, it has to be remembered that this is a sample size of one. The dataset isn't huge, and the experiment doesn't run for very long, so it's hard to gauge real-world long-term changes. It's possible, for example, that my excitement over the coming holiday or the extra free time due to classes ending is what has actually brought that change. I cannot control for those variables in this test. However, I did learn something over the course of this experiment. You see, I use that park all the time to walk to university or to the shops or into town as it's the safest way to get into the town centre from my home. Over that time, I hadn't really thought much about the beauty of the nature around me. I hadn't bothered taking time to appreciate what I was surrounded by, and I began to discover that throughout this project. You know, I feel like we miss a lot of this, this weather out here, when we're so focused on getting to where we need to be. We miss where we're going through. That doesn't make much sense. <laughs> I'll figure it out later. That was me 
trying to say that because we focus so much on using these spaces as commutes or utility spaces, on getting from A to B, so focused on where we intend to be that we fail to appreciate the world around us. We get tunnel vision. We take these natural spaces for granted. We don't think about how much nicer it is to be walking amongst the trees and watching the leaves bloom than navigating a bloated and busy city centre. At the end of the day, I learned how to better appreciate the world around me, the nature that I found myself in, and love it for what it is, rather than what I'm using it for. And in my opinion, that's worth it. Filming this a day later, I've been going over the results, and I'm not especially surprised. It's one of those common sense things of like, of course, going outside more often is going to make you feel better not especially shocking. That does not mean that it was not worth researching. And though my experiment is very low sample size, one person, all it really merits is a needs more research into this particular area. I find it fairly convincing for myself. And it's pretty sunny outside, so I think I'm going to go for a walk.